Translation tests. What are they? Should you be taking them? Should you not be taking them? How should you be taking them? What can you do instead of taking them? And everything ancillary to that. That's what we'll be covering in this video here. So translations tests are something that you've come across already if you're a translator. If you're just starting out as a freelance translator, you will come across them because they're just a fact of life in the translation world. And um, they can also be uh, a big pain. Why? Because what happens is an agency usually will ask you to perform a translation test of, say, 200, 300 words, something like that, for free in order for them to assess whether or not you are good enough to perform the translation of their document or of their project or whatever it might be for the end client. And uh, so, yeah, everything there seems pretty straightforward. You get tested. If you're good enough, they hire you. If not, no. Now, there are a couple things to keep in mind, however. First of all, always is the length. It's usually they'll ask you to perform, say, around 200 words. And maximum 300 words, depending on what it is. But it can run the gamut. It can be anything. I know of one particular case where someone was asked to translate 10 pages worth of material, and he did, and then didn't hear back. And then when he followed up and asked what was going on, they said, oh, no, we, uh, you didn't pass the test or you weren't good enough or something along those lines, which means he translated 10 pages for nothing. So this is something you want to avoid. So as a general rule, if you're first starting out and if someone asks you to perform a translation test, you can assess if you want to or not, because obviously if you're working on other projects, you should work on the projects you get paid for. But if you're interested in performing this test for future jobs with this company, and the company seems legitimate, obviously, then feel free to perform the test. The test, once again, should be 200, maybe 300 words maximum. That's it. If it's anything more, then chances are they're trying to get a free translation out of it or who knows what's going on. And if they do give you a lot more to translate, just say, I'll be happy to translate the first two, three paragraphs or whatever it is. Now, unfortunately, another thing that happens is after you've performed the translation test, you hand it in, they'll write back and say, okay, we're happy with your translation test, but we're not too happy about your rate. Do you think you could lower your rate a bit because it's a bit high for us? Now, this is also a trick that agencies can do. Why? Because you're already invested in it. You've already performed the translation test, and so you've already expended some effort. And so at this point, you can feel the job. It is almost there. It's almost yours. And they just want you to lower your rate a bit, and then it's yours. And so you kind of feel like you want to. Unfortunately, there's a reason why they waited after the test to ask you. They could have asked you before. But if they wait until after the test, then they know that you're that much more vested in it and you're that much more likely to accept the uh, lower pay rate. And quite frankly, this is a stupid game they play. I really don't like it. And so I usually recommend it. whenever you get asked to perform a translation test to write back in your email, be like, OK, if you're fine with my rate, like if you confirm my rate and my specifications, whatever they might be, depending on the translation, but usually it's the rate, then I'm more than happy to perform your translation test. This way you have it in writing that they accept your translation rate before you actually perform the test so you don't have to waste time later on. So another thing to keep in mind is do you always have to take these tests? Is there a way not to take these tests? And is there a way, is there something else you can do instead of taking these tests? And yeah, there definitely is. And for those of you who have already had some experience in translation, maybe you've noticed this, but sometimes when they ask you for a test, you can just say, well, I've performed translation similar to that one in the past, and you can see in my portfolio what I've done. And you can send them your portfolio or the parts of your portfolio that pertain to that particular translation. In fact, I had something similar happen to me once. I was hiring translators. I did not issue a test or have them perform a test, but I was hiring translators for a registry of commerce entry. And this is from China and I needed them to translate it. I can't remember into which language. And one of these translators wrote to me and said, I've performed similar translations in the past. Here, take a look at these. And he sent me three 
files of registry of commerce entries that were exactly the same format, exactly the same type as the one that I needed translating. So right away, I knew this was the right person for the job because he had experience in it and he had done it before. And so I hired him. So if you have something very similar to what the client has performed already in your portfolio, then you can just send that. And that shows that you can perform the job that you have performed the job in the past. And that way they know you are the obvious choice and you're the right person to hire. So this also means that every time you translate something new or something a bit different from what you've translated before, you should add that to your portfolio as well to show that you've performed that. So if in the future someone asks you to perform something similar to that, you have it right there in your portfolio. You don't have to go searching for it back in emails from two years ago or something along those lines. So in essence, if you're first starting out, you're going to have to take translation tests. My recommendation is to make sure that they accept your rate before you actually take the translation test. Usually you will have applied for a job wherein you state your rate. And when they ask you for the translation test, say, sure, if you're, if you find my rate and all my conditions acceptable, or if you find, as long as you find my rate acceptable, I'm more than happy to take your test. That way, you know, and you have confirmation that your rate is accepted before you actually take the test. Next, make sure the test isn't too long. 200 words usually, maybe to 300 words if if it's needed, but no more. If they ask you for three pages, four pages or something like that, you can say, I'm happy to perform the translation of the first two paragraphs, three paragraphs, whatever it might be. And next, once you start getting some experience, you can actually start using your portfolio instead of these translation tests. And if they need something translated in something similar to what you've already done, you can send them the portfolio and say, Look, is what you're translating similar to this? Because I've done this, this, and this. And uh, so that might be representative of the type of work you'll need from me for this translation. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you can find this useful in the future in terms of translation tests, in terms of what you should do, what you should not be doing. My recommendation, however, is right now to start off with your portfolio. And chances are you've performed translations already. I don't care if they're volunteer translations or if they were paid or whatever they might be, but make sure you have a portfolio. Make sure your portfolio has different types of translations you performed, not just the same type of translation over and over. If you've performed translations of Registry of Commerce entries, don't just have three, four, five different Registry of Commerce entries, but try to uh, also feature other things you've translated. Maybe you've translated contracts or documentation, stuff like that. Try to diversify a bit in your portfolio so you have an example of each one. And in the future, every time you do translate something new, add that to your portfolio if you feel comfortable with it. So please let me know also if you have any other advice for translation tests or methods that you use for your own translation tests. I'd be curious to hear about it. You can let me know in the comments below. And as a thank you, I guess, for those of you who listened all the way through, I just wanted to let you know about, uh, you know, online courses. A lot of people might be interested in online courses, but they're not really sure if it's the right thing for them. And Skillshare has a, has a thing where you can get two free weeks. If you use the link down below, uh, you get 14 free days of uh, on Skillshare, which means you have access to any of the courses they have, all of the courses they have for two weeks. And that gives you a way of checking out a couple courses and seeing if they're for you. Online courses, they can be great. There, there are also some really bad teachers out there. So it really depends. And I think this will help you figure out uh, if if online courses are good for you, these self-paced courses um, or not. And uh, that way, after 14 days, you can decide, no, nope, I don't want it. Or you can continue on a monthly or yearly basis, however it works for them. And uh, so feel free to use that link below and you can check it out for two free weeks and uh, see if online courses are good for you. Because I like them a lot and I take a lot of online courses. I find them very helpful. And so I think this is a good way of trying it out. Yeah. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you next time. Okay, thanks. Bye. Savidum.